we we believe there's really great things happening everywhere and and educators are trying very hard to support kids and we just want to celebrate that but in the in the context of helping parents figure out where they're going to have that best opportunity with their kids for years parents and community leaders relied on standardized test scores and socioeconomic status to determine the quality of a school but parents and teachers in the classrooms have long known that those limited factors only tell part of the story. With an increasing number of school options and data available to families across the U.S., parents are faced with a seemingly endless amount of information when it comes to evaluating what could be right for their child. What should parents look for when weighing education options for their students? How can community leaders use that data to replicate success? And how can we understand which school options are going to help all children succeed? This is what I want to know. And today, I'm talking to John Dean to find out. John Dean is CEO at GreatSchools.org, a nonprofit web platform that provides high quality information for parents who are looking for a good school for their child. John has nearly two decades of experience in K-12 education, previously serving as a director on the education team at the Shan Zuckerberg Initiative, where he worked with schools, districts, states, researchers, and a range of organizations in support of personalized learning. He has also held leadership roles with the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, Summit Public Schools, and was the founding executive director of Everest Public High School. John, welcome to What I Want to Know. Thanks for having me, Kevin. John, um, your work is so important, um, and I, I really want to get to uh, more detailed conversations around how parents should pick the right school, what's quality, all those things, and the good work that great schools does. But first and foremost, I, I, I want to talk a little bit about your journey, because um, as I understand it, you were a math teacher. Isn't that right? I was. I uh there's nothing more fun than teaching middle school math. Yeah, I mean, and you know, I was, I needed you as my math teacher when I was in middle school because, you know, all math teachers tell me the same thing, that you just can't skip steps. And if you don't get those steps early on, everything else is like a house of cards. And, you know, I unfortunately had a math teacher, like many American school-age children, who wasn't certified to teach math. And, you know, in second grade, she kept telling me, you know, math is hard, you know, and it, not everyone can get it. And that was ingrained in me. Now, and, and, and John, I grew up in a household where my father ended up being a pharmacist, major in chemistry. My siblings all had one sister's an accountant. Uh, one brother won the state science fair. So I was the one who could talk. And that's what saved me at the end of the day. But how did you get from being a math teacher to a school leader? Because I don't want to engage in stereotypes, but a lot of math teachers sort of like they like drilling down in their work. They love the but, you know, there aren't a whole lot that just go straight into school leadership. And you ended up doing that. Yeah. Well, and, you know, I, I didn't start my career as a math teacher. I did start as an accountant. So I got to uh, <laughs> give props to your, your sibling who did that. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But, uh, you know, I, I just loved teaching. I loved teaching. I uh, loved being with kids. Um, I loved uh, working in, in schools uh, and just the, the joy of, of watching kids kind of make that discovery. And like I uh, tried everything possible, different kids in different ways to get them to stick with things. And so that was uh, such a... And it was such a great, a great opportunity. And then uh, I worked in a, in a network of schools that was expanding and we had a, a chance to continue to grow. And it was, it was just another great opportunity to uh, find ways to serve more kids and families. Uh, and so I, I took that opportunity. And you uh, then uh, to, went from that experience being a school leader to work a little bit in the policy world and sort of the what I would call the future of education space because we work for the Zuckerberg Initiative and Melinda Bill Gates. I mean, they, they engage in a lot of big picture thinking. Talk about those experiences and how that added to sort of your depth and knowledge of the education world. Yeah, so I didn't come from a policy background, but I, I really 
explored both those roles uh, from the lens of, you know, what are the different elements that make up this system that, that produce the, the chance for a kid to get a great opportunity? Uh, what, is, what is it that comes together for a school to exist, for it to uh, be able to offer great challenges for kids, for parents to find it and to, to access those opportunities? And so I wanted to really explore that from different angles uh, and both working at the Gates Foundation and at the Chan Zuckerberg Initiative had those opportunities, uh, organizations with really big ideas and incredible people who are just looking to find ways to support uh, kids and families uh, better. Let me uh, let me ask you this because I want to I want you also to unpack how you what led you to great schools. But I'm always interested in people when they enter the education space, where and how they enter, and then where they end up. You entered, you know, you were an accountant, you became a math teacher, and now you're where you are. Uh, what has your experience told you about the education world? Yeah, it's not a journey that I hear from too many other people. And I, I think sometimes I think, well, it's been incredible. I've just been aligned and around some really amazing people who've uh, seen big picture uh, ideas and said, let's not just assume there's one right way. Let's kind of look at different um, different paths. And I think one of the things I've seen in my journey has been it's a really complex space that it takes to get a kid in a seat with a really great teacher or a kid out in the world learning, uh, a parent engaged in what they're doing, right? It requires a lot of people to have access to information and to be transparent about what's going on and a lot of people to be trained and committed. And just when we really align about what's best for kids, uh, I think we get there. And that's what I've seen in, in a lot of different ways. So I, I continue to try to sort of circle around the best ways to do that and uh, in this role, I've aligned on trying to, to support parents in their role because parents are the sort of primary and, and largest advocates for our kids. And so how can we support them best? Yeah. And, you know, I do want to talk about how you got there, but I couldn't agree with you more. I really love that answer because a lot of people on the outside of the education space, they think that they can break it down in simple terms like well all you have to do is this and it should work and even a lot of well-intentioned business leaders who got got involved in education maybe in helping with school district in a philanthropy kind of way or you know got involved with the charter school movement they, they they tend to think well we can apply these practices you know put these metrics in place data action outcome and you know and make it all work but uh, i think you're absolutely right you almost have to have a certain level of experience of the depth and breadth of this world the education world to really appreciate how complicated it is and how you have to pick your spots to be yeah. successful would you agree with that i i i couldn't agree with that more and and i will say i think you know all like like all of us in the work, sometimes we pick the right spots and we have great success. And sometimes we pick a spot and say, oh, that didn't work. What did we learn from it? Let's try to continue going. But if we kind of continue to hold, like, I'm trying to find the best opportunities for kids. I'm trying to think about how we put kids first and, and really focus on what they're learning and what they're doing and what their experiences are. Um, sort of that becomes the North Star, right? So why great schools in John Dean? How did that happen? Yeah, I, I think we, we have an opportunity, right? We've got a huge audience of parents. Uh, hopefully many of them will, will listen to you and, and are here. Uh, but they're, they're parents who are asking, you know, how do I support my kid? What do I do, right? How do I find a school for my child? How do I advocate uh, in the school? Um, when I'm at home, what can I do to support my child? And it's a it's a pretty complex world, as we just talked about. Uh, and so we try to break that down for parents and give give them an opportunity to, you know, to, to find the resources they might need to help their kids in different ways. And I think it was an air, a part of that ecosystem around schools that I hadn't really taken a deep dive into in my past experiences. Uh, so it was a, a great space to do that. But it also, for me, was an opportunity to look at what are we saying about, about schools and how we decide what quality looks like and how do parents make choices? And how can we recognize that every individual parent, every kid might be a little bit different and what people want may be a little different and that we can provide information in different ways to, to better meet their needs than we have been in the past. Um, and that just seemed like a challenge and also an incredible opportunity to come to an organization that had such a long track record of being successful with so many parents. Yeah, interestingly, you hit on two areas I really want to probe into, and that is the issue of quality. Who defines quality? What uh, 
because quality can be so subjective. And in the past, you know, people fo focus on test scores. I know Great Schools has ratings, and so much of what we do in today's world is about how many ratings and reviews you have. But this idea of quality can be so subjective, and it leads to that second point I was going to ask you about, and that is fit. Because one school may work for one child, and it may be a great experience, but it won't work for another child. In fact, yeah. even if you have more than one child in the same family, the same household, you oftentimes see that one, one school that works for one won't work for the other. So how do you disaggregate that, even as you go about your mission of defining what's a great school yeah. and trying to help parents match when you know that it can be a mismatch on occasion? Yeah, I mean, I think the first thing to know is uh, we continually are getting better at this work. And we know that that idea of helping parents find that fit for each kid is a um, it's a process that that uh, we've got to keep keep pushing on. We continually, you know, we started early with uh, some information in the early 2000s and we've continued to evolve what we're able to to provide as policy landscapes change. I think as research comes out and and we learn more and more about you know, as you said, the, this notion of quality and what, what uh, uh, you know, how schools are really serving kids well. Um, but that notion of fit really comes down to uh, how does a parent define and understand where, where their kid is going to succeed? Like, what do they know about their child? Uh, what is it that they might be interested in? What are they passionate for and their values for their kid? And how can we find a place where they can see that and understand, hey, this is where my kid's going to be great. Um, and so, we want to be able to help provide that information to them in as many ways as we can. You know, I was introduced to grade schools, it must have been about 15 years ago, and I was real active in the, in the parental choice movement, traveling around the country. And I had relatives who, because they knew about my work, and, you know, I've been pretty public on many national programs, they would call me from, you know, relatives from South Carolina, from Indianapolis, where I grew up from other places in, around the country, my wife's folks in California, and they would always ask a question, hey, you know, I've got a kid that's about to start school, you know, where, where should they go? Uh, you have any ideas? You know anyone out here? And outside of the charter network that, you know, I knew a lot of people in the charter school network, I was introduced to great schools, and I did find, in fairness, that there were pretty accurate descriptions. Describe the process that great schools go through in order to describe or define a school for a parent that logs onto the website. Because yeah. that is, that's complicated in any kind of equation you want to come up with. But I did find, as I said in fairness and found over the years, as you've gotten better, that the process you use makes sense. It's a complex set of information we try to provide and we try to make it as simple as possible. So, you know, uh, we start on a profile of a school. We have uh, a summary rating, which is broken down of a number of ratings of what's important, we believe, in describing that school from a uh, from sort of the that's the top line perspective, if you will. So we focus on the growth uh, measures within the school, student progress, if you will. And again, you know this, but every state has that a little different. So yeah. we take what we get in each state and we try to find commonalities to, to create a, a measure there. Um, for us, it's really critical to identify um, a, an equity measure for each school. What we try to, we, we believe that a great school serves all kids really well. And so we're looking at how is that school doing serving different groups of students? And I think that's one of the things we added in the last few years that's been really uh, powerful for us to start conversations with parents and communities about what's really going on within that, um, within that school or district. So those are things we add. We focus on college readiness at the high school level. Uh, and then across the profile, we've really tried to build out uh, an awareness of it, what's going on within that school that actually matters to parents. So we talk to a lot of parents. We do a lot of uh, user research to understand what are parents looking at? What are they asking about when they come to search for a school? What kinds of things do they want to know? And so we find they ask for things like, uh, tell me about rigorous programs. I want to know if my child is going to get access to, um, you know, 
again. Rigor is a word they hear. We hear challenge. They say, mm-hmm. "Can am I, is my child going to get critical thinking? Uh, you know, questions like that. And so we're trying to find ways to describe that. So what's going on in the school that might help them see these things that are happening? So we've added a section on courses and programs where we've partnered with some uh, large national organizations that provide programs across the country that may help parents identify where those things are happening. Those are some of the things that we've been building out to, to you know, narrow in on what the parents are asking for as they're, uh, you know, they're coming to find a school. So how reliable is the information? And I mean, this is obviously a pointed question, but I, I'm putting myself in the, in, the, um, yeah. in, the, in the shoes of a parent that picks up the phone after you know, looking at your, your site or they, they put something in the chat box. But how reliable, how much can parents count on the information that you provide school by school? That's a that's a pretty broad question. I think I would I you know I, what I'd ask is for that parent that information is going to give them a really good starting place for understanding some of the facts about that school, right? And that's yeah, our intent yeah. is to say how quickly can we help you put this in context relative to other schools, relative to what you're looking for, and how you know how quickly can we help you ask and answer the questions that you want to know. Right. Is it something about your particular child? And do we have information that helps you figure that out? So we hope you can rely on the the information that we've got and that we are getting better and better at providing that information so that the question you're asking, you'll say, oh, I can see what what information will help me with that. But as we kind of started the beginning of this, right, what's right for you might not be right for me. So it's going to be dependent a a little bit on uh, what you're looking for and whether, you know, whether what we can tell you about the school is the thing that you needed to understand. Yeah. And, and I, I have seen where um, you kind of feel if a school is a good school when you walk yeah. in the door, you know, mm-hmm. you spend 10, 15 minutes. And, and th- there's, there's generally a good match. I mean, I've, I've tested your site quite a bit over the years, and it's, it's generally a good match. But the one concern that I know you've heard ad nauseum is, you know, over half the kids in, in, in America's schools are at or near the poverty line. And mm-hmm. you've got a lot of working class families yeah. and they may not have the same level of sophistication. Many uh, may not even have access to the Internet that, that other families do. How are you able to provide the same level of access to information about schools when you have a lot of kids and families in need? who aren't readily available to take advantage of the information you have on your website? Again, you know, a nice big question. I, I appreciate that. I think that, you know, we design everything on our site to be as accessible as possible. So we should start with the kind of core design we have is to say the information we present, let's make it as simple as possible, which again is a, is a subjective thing, but that's what our, our intent to do. Yep. And to make it as accessible to as many people as possible. So we publish everything in English and Spanish as a start. We try to make sure that uh, when you see information, it's easy to understand where it came from and what it's actually telling you. We try to make sure that our information gets to as many channels uh, of people as possible. We we can look at the the people using our site across the country and we can kind of get a sense of representative how folks are doing, uh, you know, how we're doing reaching all different folks. Uh, and then we do things like try uh, to do outreach to increase the percentage of people writing reviews and completing reviews. Uh, one of the components of what we share, you know, when you're asking how a parent can figure out if the school is right for them is like, we want a parent to see information on the profile that would help them understand their an experience of someone like their child. And so reviews are a great way to do that. We get parents to talk about mm-hmm. um, about the school from a, a previous experience. And so we try to look at what kinds of reviews are, reviews are people writing and are they describing an experience that might be um, available or accessible to all students. And then we try to ensure that we're getting a wide range of parents leaving reviews. And so we look at all of that to try to, as best as possible, make that experience open to, to all different parents. Yeah, as you know, as I said, I, I've been a big advocate for parent uh, choice and parental choice. Mm-hmm. And uh, because of the pandemic, in part, 
the parent power movement has exploded. Mm -hmm. And um, so you do have more educated consumers among parents looking for information about their kid's school or the school they're considering to send their child to. Because of this parent explosion, it seems like you would have more, you know, uh, probing questions from parents. And and also, um, are they looking for more information? Because on one hand, you say you want to make it as simple and understandable and user-friendly as possible. But it seems that one of the byproducts of this parent power explosion in education is that you're going to find parents who say, I want to know about the curriculum. I want to know about this. I want to know about safety. And they may be asking for things that go beyond what your general sort of framework is. And and I don't know if that's the case or not, but I I, I was interested in getting your thoughts. I think as many things as you can think to ask about, there's someone who wants to know. We can start with that, right? (laughs) And if we tried to tell everybody everything in that way, uh, we'd end up with a mess. And so I think it's a balance that we, we do constantly is to look at how much information are people looking for and how can we best provide it? there's a body of information or or something parents really want to understand. We ask, how might we show that information to parents at some kind of a scale so they can understand how it would, and then how we can understand how it would impact their choices. So we'll find a a location where we might be able to gather some data uh, from a, from an available source and we'll, you know, test it out and kind of get a sense of, all right, how did parents interact with that information? So we've got smaller data sets in certain locations where we might've found it available in one state. And we're taking a look at how's, how are parents interacting with that to get a sense of whether that's something that we're going to scale uh, more broadly. Um, so we do things like that a lot, uh, but you're right. I think in the, in this space where parents are really wanting to understand, Hey, what's going on here? Um, we're finding, uh, they come to us, they look at the information we've got, but also we hear all the other ways that parents are seeking out that information. And I think it's one of the things we always say is we're one step in the process. We think we're a really important step for someone to get context. And you know, as you've said, it matches over time pretty well with what you've seen. Yeah. But still, individual parents may go on their own journey to understand, hey, for my kid, how's this going to fit? Uh, so we're one step in that process. And uh, you know, I think we... We know there are a lot of ways parents are going and doing that. And I don't think we're ever going back to a place where parents are less empowered. So it just becomes more and more important for us to continue to to reach parents that way. One thing that I was going to ask you is about what the school's expectations are with respect to the information you give. Because some schools may or may not feel that you're accurately depicting yeah. them. So talk about that process and interacting with schools and their expectations. What we know is there's so much going on in schools around the country that's excellent for kids that doesn't get captured in the the data that we have access to, the data that gets reported to the state or the federal government that schools want parents to know, right? We yeah. know that there's yeah. a lot happening and we want to be able to capture that as well. We have opportunities on all of our profiles for schools to what we call claim a profile. Right at the top of the the frame, there's a little button. Someone at the school can go click on that, and there's an opportunity for them to add information about the school because we want the school to be able to communicate to parents directly as well. Uh, But we also know that the the data that we use is continually evolving, right? The, mm. the, the, as the landscape changes and as research changes, as I, as I said. And so we hear from schools all the time, hey, have you thought about this? Hey, have you considered this other, uh, other assessment or you know, this other uh, methodology? And so we're always listening and, and trying to make sure that we are giving parents the best information possible based on all that we, we kind of hear and see. And so you know, we definitely invite schools to talk to us about that and to claim their profiles and, and share information with us that way. What I love about what you just said regarding your relationship with schools, it, it doesn't feel like an I gotcha kind of relationship, which mm-hmm. we see in today's world. You know, there are people who are always sort of looking for where the stumbles are. But if it's interactive, if it's, if, if it's engaging, and if it's sort of even-handed, then it, it really is more of a value add yeah. for parents in their perspective. It, that, I think that's exactly right. Like we, we believe there's really great things happening everywhere and, and educators are trying very hard to support kids and we just want to celebrate that. But in the, in the context of helping parents figure out where they're going to have that best opportunity with their kids. 
Yeah, it makes a lot of sense. John, I have one last question. This is what I really want to know. And, and, and that is for parents who are listening, you've emphasized a couple of times that, you know, going to the great schools dot uh, org site is one step in the process. Mm-hmm. If, you know, you were giving advice to a family member and to, who said, you know, I, I want to find out about a school or find the right school for my child. What are some of the other steps that you think parents should consider that extend beyond just looking at your site? Yeah. I mean, one, you know, some people have, have, have shared that, you know, parents need to internally be clear about who their child is and yeah. what motivates the child. And but I would like to get your thoughts for the folks who are listening. No, I, I think that's the most important thing is to kind of get a sense of your child and what it is that you value, kind of how what you're expecting out of school. I think different parents have different experiences that way. Uh, you know, if you can visit the school, talk to other parents who are there, um, read the reviews that we have. They're, they're uh, you know, a vibrant set of uh of experiences from other parents. I think those are important things. Uh, and then there, you know, I think there's a lot of, a lot of things that are important to understand. How does a school teach reading if you're in elementary school, right? We're, we're learning a lot more about that and understanding kind of the variety of ways kids are learning. And those are things not always captured in data. So try to get a sense of that. What are the, what are the other uh, experiences that you want for your kid? Um, I know at the high, I, I, I could find a school that I personally valued schools that were a little noisier and a little louder. And uh, that's yeah. kind of what I love because that's sort of how I loved a classroom. And I find parents who really like calm, quiet places. And you get yeah. you find those in different um, in, in different ways by talking to people and by by visiting the school. And I think that's just an important thing to understand. Well, and, and come on, John, I mean, how they teach math. I mean, that's important, too, right? <laughs> I mean, I don't I don't want to default to math as the most important, Kevin. But you and I both know. No, I just do that. Uh, uh, if you had had if you had had a different experience, Kevin, maybe you know, maybe we'd uh, we'd be talking about. We'd be colleagues now. about. I mean, uh, and who knows? Uh, I would I would give uh, Einstein the shakes. I guess was <laughs> 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 that theory relatively would be changed. Um, but this is all very helpful, and uh, I, I will commend you for what you're doing. I think that going forward, it is clear that more is going to be expected of you and your team than mm-hmm. less. But in the meantime, I appreciate all that you're doing, John, and thank you for joining us on What I Want to Know. Great. Thanks for having me, Kevin. Thanks for listening to What I Want to Know. Be sure to follow and subscribe to the show on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or your favorite podcast app so you can explore other episodes and dive into our discussions on the future of education. And write a review of the show. I also encourage you to join the conversation and let me know what you want to know using hashtag WIWTK on social media. That's hashtag WIWTK. For more information on Stride and online education, visit stridelearning.com. I'm your host, Kevin P. Chavis. Thank you for joining What I Want to Know.